Thank you for joining me at Evolutionary Energy Arts once again. Today we're talking about ascension. What is ascension, you may ask? Perhaps you've heard about ascension. In some circles, it's something that is spoken of on a daily basis. Well, ascension is basically the unveiling of the divine in the human. It's evolution. It's so much more than that. It's in some ways a returning to what we truly are. So in Ascension, the thought and the philosophy is we are rising up into our true potential. And we are evolving. And we are becoming lighter, developing our light bodies. And moving to a new level, a new state of being. It's a progression. It's something that occurs for several different reasons, one of which is our location in the universe. So we are being exposed to new, stronger energies that are causing mutations in our DNA. They're activating things that have been not even been dormant in us but more have been deactivated in us on purpose to keep us in this lower denser heavier vibration again for a purpose and for a reason so ascension is coming home in so many ways it's returning to what was the original plan for humans the earth itself is ascending and this is a fact and there are scientific things you can measure such as the Schumann resonance which shows that this is actually happening the Schumann resonance has hit peaks that nobody ever had seen before nobody ever had even thought possible so the literal heartbeat of the earth itself the vibrational level of the earth itself is increasing is rising higher the earth is ascending and it is up to us to match it in resonance and to ascend with it and in ascension theory there is the thought that not all humans are going to make it and to ascend with the earth and what that will look like um, is definitely up for debate for those that ascend it might be just a very very easy smooth transition that you in some ways might not even notice so much besides the fact that things are getting lighter more full of love happier things manifest easier things get smoother people are more agreeable um, everything becomes more of a heaven on earth scenario now for those that can't release the lower energies that are keeping them down they would be staying in the third dimensional frequency that we are now in we basically go back and forth between the third and the fourth dimension um, and that is what we are we are third and fourth dimensional beings and we are to rise up into higher levels and that is our destiny although not everybody will progress at the same rate it's really a matter of getting rid of the things that keep us down into the lower vibrations so what I what are lower vibrational and what are higher vibrational things well obviously the highest vibrational thing would be love um, without a doubt it would be love lower vibrational things again would be lower vibrational emotions jealousy anger fear all these type of things are lower vibrational and in my lifetime I have seen great changes in people and many people that have become more and more aware and open to these energies and many people that have found that their whole purpose in life is simply to evolve to become better versions of themselves it feels as if the earth is splitting into a couple different groups really the polarities are 
becoming more apparent and separated. And so what we must do is we must just simply work on ourselves. We need to work on ourselves. We need to catch ourselves. When we're getting angry, instead of lashing out, let it go. Send that energy down into the earth. The earth will dissipate it for you. Allow yourself to feel compassion for the other before you lash out at somebody that lashed at you. And, uh, you know, obviously this could be difficult at first, but these are the types of things that will help us to rise up in vibration. You're going to need to surround yourself with higher vibrational things because energy like attracts like. So if you are surrounding yourself with high vibrational people, high vibrational things, such as, you know, singing happy songs, doing positive acts, um, helping others, doing things that are helping others besides yourself and the community, helping the earth itself. Um, all these things will raise you up in vibration. Just simply keeping a positive attitude, practicing yoga, qigong, meditation, tai chi, these type of activities, taking care of your body, taking care of yourself. Lower energy things you know, will pull you downwards. Higher energy things will spiral you upwards. Now, not everybody wants everybody to ascend. There are those who are actively trying to keep us from ascending. And, you know, they are known by many different names and there's many different groups, um, of course, that are basically self-serving groups that are all about the ego and about self. See, at the lower dimensions, we have the ego and the ego has basically the primary care of the ego is concern for self and whereas in the higher dimensions in higher dimensional thinking is more service to others care for others more of a group mentality realizing that each individual is just one cell in the body of something so much larger whereas the self-serving aspects are more concerned with just their small little world and these groups, you know, they've used humans um, for many different reasons, primarily uh, as a source of labor, as a source of energy, and as a source of food. It gets into, well, well what are humans and, and, you know, what's our purpose and how do we get here? Well, if you look at all the stories, you know, all the mythologies, all the things that have been handed down, basically humans were created by the gods, or at least recreated by the gods. And if we look at the oldest texts going, the Sumerian texts, uh, which talk about the Anunnaki, which were the gods, and see this, the word itself, god or gods, has ha many different meanings and has been altered and changed. Um, the gods were not looked at as the creative source of the entire universe in the sense. They were more just simply higher, stronger, more powerful beings than humans. And so according to the Sumerian epics and the Sumerian tablets of which there are literally you know hundreds of thousands of them now um, they are saying that the gods got tired of doing physical work here on earth and that's when they took a humanoid being that was already here evolving on its own and changed its DNA and s actually merged their DNA with it so that they could communicate with it and so that it would be intelligent enough to be a very efficient worker so they wouldn't have to do the work themselves and that's where humans came from so humans basically have some of the DNA of the gods in them so in effect ye are gods as the Bible says and Jesus quoted the Old Testament before saying don't you know it's written that ye are gods you are gods and that is on more level than one, uh, as everything is, as above, so below. There's many different levels and layers to this. 
you know, the Egyptian um, creation epics, the Greek and all the indigenous peoples. Um, if you listen to the Dogon tribe, you know, they say that we come from the stars. That's where we come from. And yes, we do. I mean, that's half of our ancestry. Half of our lineage is from the stars. The other half is from the earth. So we have a heavenly half and we have an earthly half. And um, that really, it puts it all together when you look at it in this perspective. We were manipulated. You know, we weren't monkeys, but yet we were not exactly homo sapiens sapiens. And it appears that if you look at the fossil record, you know, there was more than one attempt at creating the perfect worker bee. There was quite a few other ones that were around for a while and then discarded and then a new version would come out. We also know that there are high civilizations here that were every bit as technically technologically advanced as we are now and in effect probably much more advanced that had tremendous amounts of people on them in which they were completely wiped out with just a remnant surviving. And this appears to happen on a regular basis. And then we do know from many of the old texts, too, that the gods allowed humans to be wiped out when natural cataclysms were coming. And then sometimes the gods themselves would wipe us out when we got to be too much of a, a hassle and too much to deal with. Now, as far as the ascension path, if you remember the uh, New Testament, you remember Jesus coming back in his ascended body. After he was crucified and died, he came back in a light body. So they could see his marks on his hands and feet. He could eat with them. He could drink with them. And he did eat and drink. He was fond of his wine and uh, socialized, but he didn't have to. And they could tell he was different. And he was able to basically just disappear and go on up into the higher dimensions. So remember, Jesus had said himself, everything I do, you will do, and even more. And in 1 Corinthians, Paul is saying, this is one of the quotes that I always remember, Now I declare unto you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. Always found that so interesting, the idea of ascension. And ascension is not just a Christian idea. It's not just a quote-unquote New Age idea. Um, it's in many, many cultures. Um, it, it goes into both um, Buddhist and Hindu philosophies as well as many others. This is a quote from Rumi. Once we were particles of light and now we are beings of light radiating love. And that is the key. It's the love. And that's the whole purpose for Christ. Um, and is it wasn't a blood sacrifice. And of course these are my own feelings and this is you know my own conclusion after over 40 years of study. Um, I do feel that what happened was the dark side took the message and changed it and uh, got us to worship the messenger and to worship and pay attention to the wrong message. It was not about blood sacrifice. It was about showing us the way. You know, I am the way, the truth, and the light. It's not by my blood you get saved. It's by becoming what I am. It's by raising your vibrations. And again, this is also in the Eastern philosophies. And if you look into Buddhism, you discover the rainbow body. And so much of Buddhist practice is all about obtaining the rainbow body, which it's the ultimate fruition of the practices. It's a body of pure light called a rainbow body. And this photograph was taken in 2011 for the rainbow body of Chok Yor Linga Rinpoche. And um, what happens is that when the person hits this elevated state of being through deep meditation and contemplation, 
and through the use of mantras, which break down energetic blockages. It's not about saying a word. So it's not like if I just keep saying, I am a God, I am a God. That's not it. it you have to vibrate it. It's about the vibration because we are energy. Everything is energy. Everything you have to think of is think in terms of vibration and frequency. We're energy. So in order to get the energy vibrating higher by the use of mantras that send out vibrations that break down blockages and allow each individual particle to speed up to raise up to vibrate faster and faster higher and higher releasing lower emotions drawing in positive emotions utilizing more of the divinity which already lies within us the potential that lies within us this is really interesting when masters achieve realization of the illusory nature of the world they are naturally able to manipulate their surroundings this is sometimes demonstrated by leaving footprints and solid rocks. Many of these holy signs are of accomplishment can be seen around the Dashjin Valley, including the prints of such great masters as Guru Rinpoche, Yeshi, Sogal, Dashjin Rinpoche, Kenpo, Yonten Gompo, and Shenpin Dare. Um, so very, very interesting. And if you delve deep, you will see that there are so many occasions when these masters were seen in two places at once um, seen levitating actually just floating in the air it was a common practice to wall somebody inside a room and they would just basically have a little opening big enough to put a pan through you know, a pan for their urine and defecation and also for their food and that's it um, <coughs> and they would be walled up there until they could tell what was in a, another room in a different place and describe what was there so that they knew that the person had learned to send their astral body out, separate their their astral body from the physical body, and go ahead and astrally project. So in everyday life, we're familiar with three dimensions of space and one of time. It is as if we are moving th with and in time and we can see the three spatial dimensions around us. Calculations, especially in string theory, to be referred to later, about the origin of the universe imply that there were 11 dimensions, seven of which are now rolled up, or appear to be rolled up to us. We cannot imagine dimensions beyond the four we know in our normal consciousness. Yet, there was just a news article that came out talking about how it appears that the brain is wired to work in 11 dimensions. And this is exactly... It goes perfectly in line with everything we are saying. So when we ascend and we lift up into the higher dimensions, we have the choice if we want to come back and try to help others do the same. And so these are ascended masters. These are masters that have already ascended and decided to come back and to work with humanity in order to raise them up to higher levels. And you may or may not recognize some of these masters. Most people will recognize Jesus in the middle. And um, there are quite a few others. Babaji, as well as you know, many others here. And there's, there's so many others that are not even pictured here um, that are considered ascended masters. So we are light beings. And if you saw what you look like on other dimensions, you would look like this. There, there is an aspect of you that is already a body of light. And it's all about building that and lifting up this lower physical body that you also inhabit. Because it's you also inhabit it. It's not that this is the only body you have. You don't. There's more than one layer to the body. There's many layers to the body. And we don't even know how many layers there are to it. Some really good psychics like Barbara Brennan has seen up to the, the middle teens, like 15 or 16 different dimensions different layers to the body and it just goes ever on upwards so here we can see some of the different layers and the physical body is just the part in the middle and so when we die physically that goes and in time uh, the etheric will go as well 
Um, but then we will build a new physical body with first an etheric template because the etheric body is the template of the physical body. At our core, we are each basically a star. If you were to see yourself on the highest levels, you would look exactly like a star in the night sky. That is really what you are. You are a star. And stars are actually beings. Every single star you see in the sky is actually a being on a very high level. So this is how the ancients knew and, and classified these stars as deities, as different types of beings. And this is a reference to Barbara Brennan's model of the first seven layers of the human energy field. And these are what they look like to her and to some other psychics. And you can see it changes as you go on up through the levels. This is Yogananda um, with Sri Yukatswar, his teacher. Yogananda brought Kriya Yoga to the West and he had seen his master here by locate actually appear to him when he knew he was 45 miles away in a different uh, town completely. His master appeared to him and talked to him. And this is one of the abilities that the yogis can do. And this is Babaji. And Babaji is reported to be many thousands of years old and still alive somewhere up in the Himalayas. And he has been basically an ascended master helping Earth evolve and helping humans evolve and become what our true potential is. Perhaps it all comes down to DNA and chromosomes because really everything is physical and everything is spiritual. The two are not really different. You know, it's just different vibratory levels. And so the DNA is, is really the key. And our DNA has been tampered with. And much of our DNA has been shut off so that we are not fully awake like our heavenly half that we come from. And perhaps that's part of the whole uh, tree in the Garden of Eden. You know, let them you know they you know they ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge, but let them not eat the fruit of the tree of life. Otherwise, they'll be like us, and they could live forever, and also have the powers of the gods. And so, when we look at what we thought is junk DNA, it's just DNA that's been disconnected, and DNA that's been short wired on purpose to keep us in a lower vibrational frequency, to keep us out of our full abilities but we can turn that DNA back on through meditation and practices like that also through devotion and and just through higher emotional states this is showing the I am presence so you basically have the human and right above it you have their Christ self which would be what we would be if we could embody what Christ was. Basically pure love, pure understanding, pure compassion. All the higher values and virtues that he embodied. And then ultimately you have your higher self. Which you could also view as an individuated expression of the Godhead. And yes, there is an ultimate source. We just can't understand it. It's something that's beyond our understanding in this limited physical existence so you can see the lower figure represents you here this one doesn't show the Christ self it just shows the upper I am presence or that individuated self the, the higher self so what happens in ascension is it's like we take the physical body and instead of the physical body dying and being just gone discarded and we withdraw back up into the higher self. The higher self creates a new physical body. And ascension, we take it with us. It rises up so that we're living and operating on a higher level of being. On a higher dimension. Like what Christ embodied. And again with the chromosomes. 42 and 2 
is what some aboriginal tribes are still at as far as the number of chromosomes. So they only observe one energy, one life, and everything everywhere. That's why they can't understand us modern humans because we do things that are against the good of the all. If you would think of ants and bees, think about how worker ants and worker bees would just sacrifice themselves in a second for the queen and for the good of the hive. It's just a natural reaction. They understand that they are all one. So we are at 44 and 2, which is most of mankind's current level. It's disharmonic, and it acts as a stepping stone between 42 and 2 and 46 and 2. And then 46 and 2 is the new level of unity consciousness where all humans will be in touch primarily with their spirit rather than dependent on our minds. We will have a deeper level of spiritual connection together. And this is all according to Drumvalvo Drum Melchizedek, who has written some really interesting books on Ascension. And it also goes along with a lot of Carl Jung's philosophies. Um, so our ultimate goal is to embody the light, to hold as much light in ourselves as we can, to lift ourselves up and together lift each other up and lift ourselves into a society that can create an actual heaven here on earth. If you have ever seen um, the Celestine Prophecy movie or read the book, it's a great example of ascension because that's what we're here for. And you know you're on the right path when you experience the synchronicities. Things flow. You meet the right people. You get the right circumstances to come together. So I hope you guys found this informative. Please give it the thumbs up if you did like it. Um, and if you didn't um, subscribe yet, please do subscribe. We truly appreciate your stopping by and joining us. And then share with others. Let's help spread this knowledge. You know, we have everything we could possibly want right here around us and we could create the world that we want it's just simply a matter of understanding what's going on and in a way unplugging from the down negative reality and just simply plugging into the most positive reality you can imagine and doing the things that keep you vibrating high and this will change the world one person at a time thank you so much take care